Okay, so this is the video where we're actually going to start looking at the code implementation and how we're going to get these boxes to suddenly start falling and bouncing off of each other. So if you remember, we have this box class, and what we said is, aha, instead of adding all the physics into that box class ourselves, we're going to add a box or body into that box class. And how do we do that? We've got this long list of steps that we went through. So we need to look at the code implementation for each one of these steps. But before we can even do that, we have kind of a larger question, right? Just putting bodies into a box object isn't just the only piece of this puzzle. We need to do, I, I'm going to divide this into three things. There are three things we need to add to that processing sketch to have full on box 2D physics happening. So number one is we need to deal with the box 2D world. So where we're going to do this is in the main tab. And more specifically, we're going to add the box 2D world into processing setup. So this is a key thing here, right? The body is the entity in the world that moves around, but in order for the body to exist, it's got to be in a world. So the world is something we're going to set up when we begin our processing sketch. That's item number one. So um, item number two is what we spent all this time going through. So we need to create bodies, create a body, and where we're going to do that is in our own objects constructor. So our object is called a box in our objects constructor, the box objects constructor. So every time we make our own object in that objects constructor, it says, oh, you're making an object? I got to make a box 2D one to go along with it. So every one of our objects will have a box 2D object, that will, box 2D body that will go along with it. Once we've done that, we're pretty far along. But what we actually need to do, remember, it's, uh, we're the designers. We're going to draw everything, set the colors, set the shapes, load images, design our world. What we need to do is um, ask Box2D where uh, we need to rewrite our display method. So we need to um, ask Box2D where. Where is the body? And where we're going to do that is in the boxes display function. So up here we have this idea of in the main program, we're creating a box2d world. In our objects, we're creating body objects. And then when it comes time to draw that object, we're going to ask that, bo that body object, where are you, so I can draw you in the right place. Okay? So these are the three things we need to add to that processing sketch. So what I've done is a lot of code. We're going to have to sort of deal with the fact that how could you ever possibly like, remember all the code that you need for each one of these steps? And there's this body type, dot this, dot this, add this, blah, blah, blah. So we're going to have to sort of. Um, piece this together. It's going to be a little bit challenging, but what I have over here is I have a, a version of this exercise sort of semi-solved. So it has maybe 60 to 75 percent of the code already written. Um, so we can look through some of that, and some of it I'm going to add as we go here manually and try to see if I can remember it. So, um, so one thing that I'll first note is related to item number one, which is set up the world in our main program, is we need to import all the library. So there's, there's lots of stuff we're importing. We're importing a whole lot of classes from JPOX2D. We're importing some stuff from PBOX2D, a little helper class to provide us with some functionality. So there's a lot of stuff that's being imported here. And we're, we're later, um, hopefully at some point in this video, I'll kind of go and show you where you can kind of look up all the documentation for this stuff. But one of the things we get from the PBOX2D library is we can make a PBOX2D object. And I'm going to call it Box2D. And this, we make a new PBOX2D object. And this is where we create our world. So the P box 2D object is kind of the main object. You can make it a sort of a global variable for your entire sketch. And it is what is holding on to the box 2D world. So all of the information that's about the world, does it have a, you know, what is, it, is, what is the gravity force in the world or other parameters of the world that you can look at, setting. But we're just creating a world with default settings. So we need in processing setup to create the P box 2D object and call box 2 dcreate world. The other thing that I should look at, point out that we need to do in draw, is we need to say box2d.step. So one, remember box2d, if you remember, I think we covered this. It's a library that thinks in terms of real world units, seconds, and time. So one thing we have to do is every time through draw, we have a new frame of animation we're going to display on the screen. We have to tell box2d, step to the next moment in time. So box2d, step to the moment, next moment in time, we're going to draw everything. Step to the next moment in time, we're going to draw everything. Step to the next moment in time, we're going to draw everything. What's interesting about this is you can pa pa you know, start and stop the physics by you know, deciding when you're going to call step. But here, we basically were just operating under this methodology of 
every time through draw is one step through box 2D time. So this we're done. This is, I believe, until I realized I forgot something, this is everything we need to do to add the box 2D world into the main tab. So the next stuff that we need to look at is creating the body, which we want to do in the constructor of the box object. So the moment we create a box object, we want to create a body to go along with it, with all these steps. Body definition, position type, body, shape, fixture, uh, and put it all together by fixture takes the shape and attaches it to the body. So let's look. Most of this I've typed in already, and we're just gonna, I'm going to kind of scan through it. I think it's going to be up to you to kind of download the examples, look through them, see what the questions are. Um, but I, don't, I think it's not useful for me to sit here and type out every single one of these lines of code. I'm telling myself this because I'm not entirely sure. But I've left a few mistakes out. So we'll see. Watch what I'm about to show you. See if you can figure out what there's a fundamental sort of horrific flaw in this code that we'll fix. But first we can see where step one, define the body. So we make a body definition object. The type, the, it, the type is dynamic. You can see here, this is where we might set a static or a kinematic one. But here, we're making a dynamic body. And then the other thing we need to set about a body is its initial position. Where is its initial position? Its initial position is x, y. Do you notice anything wrong here? <laughs> Think about it. Its initial position is x, y. What is x, y? x, y are the arguments I passed in here. Mouse x, mouse y. What are those coordinates in? Those coordinates are in pixels. The mouse location in pixels. Remember, the box 2D coordinate system is completely different than, the, um, than our pixel coordinate system. So this is a moment where we have to stop, pause, and convert the pixel coordinates to world coordinates, box 2D world coordinates. So I'm just going to show you that instead of passing in x, y directly, you can use one of the helper functions we covered, coordinate pixel to world x, y. So this is where, before you set that position, think to yourself, am I setting a world position? And am I thinking in pixels? I've got to convert it. Okay, So that's really important. So that is step one, create the body definition. Step two is create the body. Remember we said this was going to be really simple. Well, it's one line of code. Create the body from that body definition and store it in the body reference. Easy peasy. I can't believe I just said easy peasy. Okay, the next thing we need to do is create a shape. And we're going to use polygon shape as a box. And we can see here we are creating a polygon shape. And we're making it a box with a width and a height. Again, the same problem is here. What is that width and what is that height? We're thinking in pixels. We've set them up to be 16, a width of 16 and a height of 16. Those values are in pixels. We need those values to be in box 2D world units. So we're not converting a coordinate where we're converting, we're scaling a scalar value, a single number. So what we need to do is say this. Float, I'm going to just make a new variable. Box 2D width equals box 2D dot scalar pixels to world w. And then I'm going to make one for height, scalar pixels to world height. And you can see, and now um, we need to set the actual polygons width and height with the converted values. right? We need to scale the width, scale the height. Okay, We've forgotten one other thing, though. So this is pretty close. We've almost got it right. We got the pixels. We converted it to world, and we set it. But we missed one little tiny thing, which I will show you, which is that if you recall, kind of run out of space here, but I'm going to use this little patch here. We think of a rectangle when we draw one as this is its width and this is its height. But in box 2D, shapes, box shapes are thought of as the width as the distance from the center. And the distance from the center is the height. So what we actually want to convert, we actually want to say that box 2D width is the that we want to convert the width divided by 2 and the height divided by 2 to set the box up correctly. Okay, So this is really important. Step 1, define the body. Step 2, create the body. Step 3, create the shape. All the while, we've got to be thinking, do we need to convert pixels to world? Then we've got a step 4. If you remember, we're almost to the end. Step 4, make the fixture, set these parameters. And in the end, we're going to put it all together with step 5. So here we are creating the fixture, a fixture definition. Now, this is a really, really key line of code. Right here is a really key line of code. Because notice how we're saying this, that fixture shape is PS. What is PS? It's the polygon shape. So we need to make sure when we create the fixture that we're assigning it a shape. Because the fixture is what's going to get attached to that body. A fixture is like the glue between the shape and the the body. And then we can see here are some parameters. So you might be asking yourself, well, what value should I use for density? What value should I use for friction, restitution? 
It's a good question. There are kind of, if you look through the Box 2D manual, it'll give you kind of suggested ranges for these. I believe restitution between 0 and 1 and friction as well. Um, density, you don't want a density of 0. That doesn't make any sense. Um, so, but mostly my advice to you when dealing with picking values for these is try different values and see how it behaves. Kind of use your intuition, try different things. If you want to get fancy, build yourself a little interface to tweak all the values, see how it works. But it's important to realize that also that this is all hard coded right here. It doesn't need to be hard coded. These can be variables. You can make objects with different frictions, different restitutions. There's a lot of power in how you can control the physics. And then the last step here we can see is this is putting it all together, body.createFixture with the fixture definition. So that's saying, hey, there's a shape, there's a fixture, there's a body, put it all together. So once we've done all this, we've done it. We now have, uh, you can't fit it all in one little screen here, but we now have all the steps and we've made that box to body in our box object. And we could run. Ooh, I missed something. Uh, coordinate pixels to world, maybe? There we go. Um, we've done it, and now when I click the mouse, no physics. Why is there no physics? The reason there's no physics is look at this. We're just still drawing the rectangle at that xy location. We need to, that xy location, remember, was the original location of the rectangle. That's why it's sitting there right there. We need to go and ask. This is our, this is our we've done one and we've done two. This is the third one. We need to say, hey, Boxer D, where is the body? I need to draw it at that location. So we're almost done with this. It's very exciting. Once we add this last step into the display method, we're going to be good to go. So if we come over here, what we need to do is Box2D will give us a vector telling us where that object is. And it would give that to us in world coordinates, which we'd have to convert to pixel coordinates. But the, the, um, the Box2D object that we're using has a little helper function, and it's called get body pixel coordinate. We pass in the body. And I can call this position, perhaps. So this is us saying, hey, where is the body's pixel location? Give it to me in a vector. And then I can translate to that object's location. So instead of drawing at the original xy where the object started, every time we display it, we want to say, hey, where are you currently? So I'm going to run this again. And we're going to see, hey, look, stuff is falling. And it's even kind of, you can see it's separating, like it's colliding with each other. We're almost there. We missed one thing. In addition to the location, we want to know the angle. What is the current angle of that object? Because Box2D will handle collisions with angular motion and all this wonderful stuff. And the way we get that is float A equals body.getAngle. And then once we've translated, we can rotate by that angle. Now, let's run this. And now, I don't know, use your powers of detection. And does it look right to you? I don't know if you can tell. It's very small. It's actually wrong. So we've done everything right, but we missed one little detail. If you remember, OK, think about this for a second. The processing window, uh, the, what is the y-axis point? The y-axis points down, right? Pixel 0 is at the top. Higher numbers, pixels go down. A box 2D world is flipped. The y-axis points up in a box 2D world. This means rotation is also flipped. So what we actually need to do is rotate by negative a. And once we do that, and I'm just going to move this over here, um, once we do that, we can see here, look, there it is. There's our box 2D world. We've got everything in there. So um, I, don't, this, I don't know if this, this really worked very well to kind of, like, kind of race through a lot of this stuff. Um, I, I guess I'm, I'm, there's a couple things to mention here. Right? I kind of race through all of this code. What I think is important is to understand these steps and understand where these steps go. So hopefully you got that from this video. Right? When we create our box object, we create the body object. When we draw our box object, we ask where the body object is. So that's the key thing to take away. Where do you find out, like, where, what if I do circle shape? And what if I do chain shape? And how do I figure out what this function does or this parameter does? So there's, Number one, there's more examples. I have more examples, and I'm going to go through some more examples. So that will help you. Number two, you can look at the nature of code book, and it has more details, and all of the code is there, so you can kind of read through it. But number three, one thing you might want to just take, if you want to go deeper into Box2D, one thing that you might consider doing, which I have um, here, hopefully, um, is that if you download JBox2D from the JBox2D website, this is hard for you to see, you can actually, it will have the, the Javadoc API in there. And if we, what I'm looking for is just this index.html file, which is here in the API docs folder. And if I open that up, I'm going to zoom back out. You can see, look, every class, like if, you, if we wanted to find out the functions for a circle shape, 
It's right here, and all the documentation is here. So all of these functions for what, what we can do with a circle shape, this is where you might want to look. So you know, tread carefully. It's Java documentation. You, might, you may or may not be used to that. But now that we have the sort of basic process for how we add Box2D into a sketch, you know, hopefully this made sense. We're going to be able to go through more and more examples. We're going to get to look at a chain shape. We're going to look at joints. We're going to look at how do we apply a force to an object. And also, how do we actually make something happen when two objects collide? So I would say that's really like one, two, three, four, five more videos that hopefully we'll get to at some point. All this information you can find in the Nature of Code book as well. Okay? So uh, thank you, and I'm going to click a button.